Welcome to the Princess and the Bee podcast, the place to be to build your empire as queen of your body, business, and life. I'm your host, Kimberly Spencer, founder of crownyourself.com, and I'm an award-winning coach, Amazon best-selling author, and multi-passionate entrepreneur. Each week, I give you the systems, strategies, and success stories to help you master your mindset, communicate with ease, and triple your productivity so you make the income and the impact you deserve. Imagine this podcast as your weekly spark of inspiration as you take it to the next level with all the bees of your life, body, business, bank account, boys, and babies. Let's make it rain. Welcome back, Princess and the Beers. Oh my goodness. Today is a very special day because I know that this podcast, even though I'm not recording it on the day of, this podcast is being released on my birthday. And it is quite a special day because I am finally the age that Spike thought that I was when he met me, which was seven years ago. So (laughs) I've always presented myself as a little bit more mature, kind of. I mean, with unicorns and sparkles and all that shit. But like, I've I've always presented myself from that a bit more of a well-spoken uh, tone, I guess you could say. Oh my goodness, funny story. So when I was um, 16, I was chosen to have my screenplay produced for this festival. Like it was an amazing experience. I was so blessed and I was paired with a director who was going to direct my screenplay. And this was like dream come true for 16 year old me. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is this is like it's happening and she reads my script and she comes back to me and says in our in our first meeting she's like teenagers don't talk like this I was like well that's a very lowbrow assumption that you have of teenagers I know many teenagers that talk like this they're not like oh like yo what's up how's how's it going like I talked pretty eloquently when I was 16 years old it really has not changed that much But now I finally feel like I'm the age that I was always meant to be. Um, So now I'll just stay 32 for, you know, forever until I decide to age more. Because with age comes wisdom. So thank you so much for tuning in today. I... I am so grateful that you have been here, that you have been so supportive of The Princess and the Bee with sharing it, with sharing it on your stories on Insta and and emailing us and sharing what you loved and your big top takeaways. OMG. OMG. So amazing. Like, I am so grateful for the Crown Yourself community that we are building. If you are not in that Facebook group, be sure that you are because you can still catch our sixth day, the final day of our six day, six pillars of building your freedom based biz of the princess process of mindset, skill set, systems, branding, marketing, sales, and how we break it down into how to make it easy with strategies and a direction and a plan to set you on your merry way so that you can rock it out for the next few months of this year. Holy moly, we are in September. Let's finish strong, shall we? So pop in to that group. We will leave a link so that you can still get registered. You can still download your action guide for the training. You can still binge watch the whole thing and then join us on September 3rd for our grand finale. And on September 3rd, which is tomorrow, day after my birthday, is that... um. The Princess Process opens, and I'm so excited for you to join us, for you to be there, for you to be on the waitlist and receive your $500 worth of savings and bonuses. Yes, please. Um, I am so excited to serve you and support you and grow you and, and help you. I mean, if you've ever felt like you are in need of a coach, but you don't have thousands of dollars right now to, to slap down on, on private coaching, then this is a program for you. This is the program that will up-level you as the leader of your business because especially if you're a solopreneur, especially if you're starting out, especially if you don't have a team, and more importantly, if you do, everything is following your lead. And so that is what the Princess Process is all about. And once you go back and watch all the trainings from the past five days, um, you will see how you can 
how elevating yourself from the underpaid employee who's doing all the things in your business but not really making much profit to the leader of your biz to that queen bee of your biz like that is where success miracles manifesting and operating in your genius zone where you are thriving is going down like that's where it happens and so that is what we get to tap you into more inside the princess process and I give you my exact systems and strategies as to how I have been able to do that while raising a baby who is now a very precocious toddler and fortunately who is napping so that being said let us move on to the topic of the day so we will have all those links in the description be sure that you get it get on the list, get in the training, get in the group. Let's rock it out. It's going to be amazing. Plus, it's my birthday. So, yay! Um, <clears throat> see, I'm even speaking in future terms as if it's my birthday because it's close enough. So, that's manifesting. I'm manifesting my birthday as I'm speaking right now. So, I'm very excited about the year 32. I know it's going to be the best year ever. That being said... Let's dive into one of my favorite topics that was based off of a discussion that I was having with my husband because I have such awesome discussions with him. So we have, we were just enjoying a James Wedmore podcast, um, who is one of my amazing mentors and his podcast, Mind Your Business, is rockin'. Like it is an amazing podcast and show. And we were listening to the episode about questioning everything. I will leave a link to that episode in the descriptions. Well, I won't, but Marie will, who does my all the descriptions and editing and all the stuff, things of my podcast, um, because I'm operating in my genius zone speaking to you right now, which is awesome. So we were listening to a, a, the podcast and it was stimulating all this gloriousness and all this conversation. So we obviously had to put James on hold and on pause for a hot second while we discussed this hot topic that suddenly came to me like a bolt of divine lightning. And I was quite excited to share so much so that I decided it carried over into two days later or one day later. It was just yesterday into one day later where I am now providing you with that divine download of the difference between Having success, ber- ber- it's so good, it's verses, verses, I mean verses with a V, not verses, verses is not a word. Having success versus being success. So if you tuned in to our last podcast episode, which really did, oh my goodness, your reviews, your feedback, everything has been awesome from that. And I'm really so grateful for that because that topic of the fear of having success and then losing success, it continued to perpetuate and stimulate and expand into this podcast episode where we're diving into the nitty gritty of how you speak about success and what success is for you. So when we know as princess in the beers that your language is a command to consciousness itself. So the language that you're using is the language that is directing your unconscious mind into where it's going to go. So are you talking about success as something that you are or as something that you have? Think about it. Do you think about success as something that you have, meaning that you don't currently have it now or you haven't had it in the past or that you are? Big difference. One of the topics, one of the, the, the things I spoke about in the last podcast episode um, was the fear of losing success. So most of the high performers and high achievers that I've worked with, they don't really have the biggest fear of the loss initial, the initial loss of the pain or the, the stuff, the, the work that's going to go in. They're high achievers. Like they work. They do the work. So sacrificing something, to sacrificing comfort for the sake of doing the work, not the biggest, scariest thing. The second mm, bigger fear is this fear of the process. So it's the fear of, and this is based off of Brendan Bouchard's work uh, and breakdown of what the three fears of success are. So there's the fear of, of the fears going into and achieving any goal. So there's the fear of the loss. There's the fear of like, oh my gosh, so I don't want to lose my comfort or I don't want to lose um, my, my time with my kids or I don't want to lose whatever. And then the fear of 
of that causes and then there's the fear of the process which is I don't know how I don't know how to do this thing I don't know how to launch a webinar I don't know how to do a live stream I don't know how to speak uh, extemporaneously on a podcast I don't know how to um break down my ideas into an online course. I don't know how to coach. I don't know how to structure a coaching program. I don't know how to um, blah, 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 whatever it is. Um, It's the fear of the process of figuring out the how. And so with figuring out the how, it's just about trusting the fact that you figured out how to in the past before. You figured out how to walk. You figured out how to talk. You figured out how to do many, 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 many things in your life. None of us were born into this life with any sort of skill set whatsoever. We were all little lumps. And I know this because I recently raised a little lump into being now a walking, talking human being who loves buses immensely. And the third one is the number one fear that I have seen with my high achievers. And it's probably because it mirrors a fear that I had as well. And it's the fear of success. Now, I don't really fear success. Like, it sounds silly at first, like fearing success, because you're like, why would I fear having a million dollars? Like, that's not, (laughs) that's not a problem. I'm really okay with that. Like, why would I fear having Louboutin peep toe pumps, which are ridiculously comfortable, by the way? Um, Or why would I fear having whatever it is? Like, why would I fear having success? Why would I fear having a house? Why would I fear having uh, all the money to pay all my bills? Why would I fear having any of that? Well, it's not necessarily that. It's not necessarily just the fear of success. It's the fear that if I have success, if I have success in the way that I want it, in the way that I desire it, in the way that like fuel, if I actually achieve my dreams, what if I lose it? This is a common one that I that I've seen and that I spoke on in the last podcast episode with with anybody who's experienced either generational loss whether you grew up hearing stories of loss or you've experienced personal loss on a on a massive scale and it can be anything from losing your cat to be, that you had a fantastic relationship with to losing your home your loved ones your business your everything going bankrupt and all that like my husband did um and that was a fear that we've had to overcome with him together is his fear of actually having success because his he was it's not the fear of having success it's the fear of losing it losing me losing Declan losing um losing anything that he's able to achieve and that was a big fear that we had to work on for years in our relationship before Declan was born and so why this was brought up was we were discussing that fear and specifically in our car ride and we were discussing it and I said I looked down and it was my Louis Vuitton purse that inspired this where I looked at how I'd been approaching the belief of success and really what does that mean because success is it's it's a abstract concept Every single person has a different internal representation of what success means to them. Now, one of the questions that I ask my high-performing clients is, how do you live every day successfully? Because by living every day successfully, you are in essence being a success, which therefore attracts more success in your way that you define success to come to you. That's manifesting, baby. So... Having success, though, having success, because I looked down at my purse. So backstory on my purse for a hot second. When I was 18 years old, I'd successfully saved $10,000 from allowances and all the things and odd jobs and babysitting. And I was very, very proud of myself. I had saved $10,000. And this was the first amount of money that was mine. I had it in my account. It was mine. It was I was so proud of it. And I knew that I was venturing forth into the wild, crazy world of Hollywood. And I wanted to look professional. And I had always dreamed of having a Louis Vuitton purse. Now, where this love of luxury came from, probably it's from my grandmother because my mom does not have it. My dad does not have it. Like they like going on nice trips and things, but my dad grew up dirt poor. My mom grew up Uh, upper middle class and fairly well off, but she never really had that love of luxury or like designer items. 
I did. Um, and so I and I do. And I'm very, very open about that. And I have no problem or no shame around it because I, I love it and it enhances me and it brings me joy. And so when I was 18 years old, I took $1,000 of my $10,000 and I spent it on a Louis Vuitton um, briefcase looking bag that I still carry with me today. I mean, that's the thing about buying high quality items is they last for a long time, much longer than cheap purses that I used to buy when I was a kid. Um, Because when I was a kid growing up, we didn't have a lot of money. Um, It like my parents were just starting their business. There was a lot of struggle. Kmart was the normal. And so we're broken purses and broken sunglasses because buying cheaper made items um, from other department stores and Goodwill and other places caused you know, them to break faster. My Louis has not broken. 10 years. I now use it as a diaper bag with my laptop. It is my full-on mom bag. However, so I got this purse and I looked down at it. And well, yes, it has a lot of meaning to me. I, w- I also bought it because it was right when I had realized that I had struggled with bulimia. And it was right at my turning point where I was like, I am no longer going to be stuck on the struggle bus with this eating disorder thing. I'm going to figure this shit out. I'm going to figure out what is this, like, how do I think about my body? How do I feel in my body? All the things that are going to be released in my book, Mindful Meals, that is coming out in October. Yes, we had to postpone the date because of the Princess Process launch and other things. Um, But I'm very excited and proud for this book to be coming out. So I had this fear of, so I was looking at this purse that, that has a lot of meaning behind it. At the same time, it has no meaning. Like it's a thing. Like I have it, I could lose it. God forbid. I really don't want to. I really like it a lot. Um, But you have success you lo- can lose success. I, you, if you have anything, you can lose that thing, right? Like I've lost sunglasses. You've probably lost sunglasses or you lost pens or things like that. They're all things. If you have something, you can lose something. What you can never lose, what you can never have taxed even, is your knowledge, is your personal growth. Because I know, oh, if I lost that purse now, I'd go out and get another one. Like, like, that would nothing would stop me. Like, oh, I'd, okay, I'd go out and get another one. But having success and the fear of losing success, it's, it's a picture that, that is painted that, that can get very dark because it's a perception of having success as being an outward thing that you can lose. Well, what happens if you lose something? Well, you can always go gain it back. But is that belief really attached to that loss? Not necessarily when you're in the middle of it, and especially not when you've been working your ass off to get it. But you can never lose anything that you be. You can never lose anything that you become. You can never lose anything that you are. So for example... I thought having my e-commerce business that I was a success. I was 24 years old as the executive, the co-executive of an e-commerce brand of a quarter of a million dollar company that I was really, really proud of and that I had like I was going in green except for my knowledge of back pain and physical thera- uh, physical fitness and physical therapy, even though I'm not a physical therapist, but I t- taught b- Pilates for 10 years, very well versed in the body, we rehabbed tons of people from back pain and whatnot, and diff- other sorts of injuries and issues. And so I knew the value of this product that we were selling. And I was offered this opportunity. And I felt like, oh, I had it, but I was not embodying it. Now, it took some hard knocks for me to learn how to embody it rather than to have it because I and and once I gained that perspective, I look back on that time. I'm like, oh, my gosh, how much I gained. I gained the identity of being entirely 100 percent who I am authentic in my business as me. Awesome. That is a success to me. I gain the ability to do what I want when I want 
without the constraints of a partner or joint venture partners or investors or anything like that. I gained the ability to have a 100% completely owned by me business where I can do what I want, when I want, and make however much I want. And that's the thing. Having a success, having success, it means that you can also lose it. The language that we use is super powerful. But being a success, what does to be a success really mean to you? To be a success for me, it means being able to have the time, flexibility, freedom to do what I'm best at, to operate inside of my genius zone, to delegate the rest to my team, to train my team, to grow a community, to have amazing experiences with my husband and with my son and any other children I decide to have along the way. That to me is being a success. Being a success to me means living healthfully every day. It means practicing having the time and and the sacred ability to be able to practice my health like in the form of exercise and meditation and eating well and eating organic foods. Like that to me is being a success as well as money, as well as being able to serve. Being a success for me means being able to serve powerfully and many people and now having tallied up our impact report of across all our platforms, our web platform podcast, podcast, Pinterest, um, Facebook, and every single one of the platforms that we have either Kimberly Spencer on as the brand or Kimberly uh, or crown yourself. We now have an impact of over a hundred something thousand, like uh, almost 172,000 people. I think it was last time. 72,000 people have come across our brand, have come across this, this podcast. And, and thank you to you massive thank you to you like that this is not this is not me like I just I just operate in my genius zone I just do my thing being a success is for me it's being able to be a hundred percent unapologetically me that's a part of being a success it's being able to travel it's being being free having success having freedom it's a mentality that means that something could get taken away you have a purse you have a thing it could get taken away you could lose it so look at how you're defining success Look at what is your definition of success. And here's the thing, though, high achievers. You cannot define success by success. You just can't, you can't use it to define it. Define it as how do you live each day successfully. And if you don't know, ask yourself, when you have felt most happy and most successful, what did you do that day? How did you operate? This breaks down the successful habits that you have because the more successful habits that you have, it's the, it's the compound effect is the more successful you're going to feel and act and be on a daily basis. And by being, that is how you have more. Like I can tell you when I was first in my e-commerce business, I did not be success. I thought I had it, but I did not be it. I constantly doubted myself. I constantly had imposter syndrome. I constantly thought thought I was underqualified for the job. And apparently other people did too. Um, But that's besides the point. Um, But it's because I wasn't being it. Even though we'd accomplished a lot of amazing things, I wasn't fully 100% unapologetically embodying it with the habits, beliefs, and, and systems. People are systems, by the way. If you attended our 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 training, our six-day workshop, our six-day training extravaganza that we have done over the past five days, um, 
you know from the systems module, from the systems workshop, people are systems. You are a system. I did not have, back then my habits were so crappy. My habits, I was gaining weight. I was drinking at least two glasses of wine a night. Um, massively stressed out of my mind. I was not exercising. I was not honoring my body. I was freaking out on a regular basis. I was waking up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. to check my email. I did not have good habits in place with my, with my first e-commerce company. It taught me so much about the difference between having and being. Had I been had I been having the successful habits, the things that I do on a daily basis now that make me a success, eating healthfully, maintaining my energy, playing with my son, having meaningful experiences, going for walks, serving my clients, serving my community, enriching people's lives, inspiring and challenging and connecting, all of those things. I was not doing like 90% of them in my first company. I was living from such a fear-based mindset, such a place of scarcity, such a place of, I already said fear-based mindset, but there was a lot of fear. So I was not being the successful version of myself. And thus, because even though I thought I had it, because I was not being it, I lost it. And that's okay. I'm really grateful for that experience. Because it taught me the difference between being a success and having success. Uh, and having success. Because having anything, you can lose it. You can, you can have it one day and then not have it the other day. But being a success, nobody can take being a success away from me. Nobody can take being my definition of success. No one can take being your definition of success away from you. The question is, are you living, are you being a success every day? Are you being, are you operating as the vision of your future self, as the vision of your most successful and happiest self? Are you being and operating in that space every day? So let's future pace for a hot second. By first ask yourself, what in the past, when I have felt my happiest and most successful self How have I operated that day? And I mean literally try, like remember to the nitty gritty detail what that was. For me, it's getting a good seven hours of sleep. I am still working on that. That is a work in progress for me as a mom. Um, I am used to operate off of very little and now my body is just like, nope, you need seven hours, seven hours at the least. For me, it is, waking up and doing my journal. It's going for a run or doing a Pilates exercise. It's getting my meditation in. It's getting my creativity done before my my son wakes up. It's having breakfast with him. It's being able to have journaling time and have meditation time and have time to operate in my zone of genius, which is, for me, it's the art of creation. It's the art of creating this podcast, not necessarily doing all the, the detailed things that I now pass off to my team, but it's the art of creating posts. It's the art of creating blogs. It's the art of creating live streams, of creating podcasts, of creating courses. Of it's And it's the art of coaching, the, the magic that goes into coaching my clients and those experiences that we create together as we dive in and I get to work my other superpower of challenging. That is all me being a success because that is me serving through myself. You cannot serve anybody else. For me, success is very much defined by service. You cannot serve other people if you are not serving yourself to your highest, best, happiest That is one of the top things that we have discussed in the six-day live training, which you still have access to. You can still go back and watch because one of the top things is the role that you are operating in. If you are not operating as a CEO in your business, if you are not, and if you need to go look at or find somebody who is a CEO of of a company that you admire and see, oh my gosh, that is how they operate. That's what they work on on a daily basis. And here's what I'm doing. 
if you're operating in the role of being an underpaid employee doing all the things that you're not 100% skilled at, if you are operating from a place that if really you were that in that CEO position, you would fire yourself because you're not actually moving the needle, you're not actually doing shit that moves moves the needle forward of your business, of profit, of, of service, of customers, like that's where you got to assess. So, because business is monitored and measured by monetary success. And you can have that monetary number be whatever you want it to be. It can be just a number that's to sustain and support your family so that you can go on vacations. It can be a multi-million dollar business. It can be what, however big or however small you want it to be, but it is dependent upon you and the energy that you're bringing to your business and the beliefs of what success is. So without a clear direction of what success is for you, that is when you get lost like a rudderless ship. But when you know what success looks like and feels like, keyword, feels like that's how you manifest is the feeling on a daily basis. And how do you get the feeling is you do the habits, the habits that bring you that next level of success, the habits that make you feel more consistently like a success. For me, it's like my morning routine, non-negotiable. And the times that I have negotiated it, I have not felt like a success that day. I have felt like I was operating at maybe 50%, which even though for some people that's like still running circles around them, it, that doesn't matter. It's not running circles around myself and I'm the only one I'm in competition with. I'm not comparing myself to anybody else. I'm only comparing myself to my highest and best standard that I know I can be. And when I'm not operating at that level from that feeling, then that is where results get shoddy. And I don't like shoddy results. And I know you don't either because we're all high achievers here. That's why we listen to the princess and the bee. That's why you come here. That's why I'm so grateful that you show up for yourself and that you are here and you are present with me. So once you ask yourself, number one question, what did you do? And you dive in to the details. What did you do on a daily basis when you have felt like your happiest and most successful self, like breaking it down from the moment you woke up to the morning you went to bed, to the moment you went to bed. And even though, even if you may not have had a quote unquote perfect day, combine all the days that you have felt like your most happiest and successful self and look at all the common denominators. What did you do that day? For me, it is how often did I operate in my genius zone of connecting, creating, and challenging. And coaching. Yes, but I consider challenging coaching. Um, Not coaching as being challenging, but challenging as a part of coaching. Um, That's just what I'm really skilled at doing. And then number two, the number two question is look at your future self. Look at the future you want to create. Look at that future. Who do you have to become to do that? Who do you have to become to operate in that space of that vision? Because it's not the current you. It is the current you that you're going to put together from looking at all those pieces and the common denominators of all those habits and things that you did during those most happy and most successful days. And then when you combine that into this person that you are creating yourself to be so that you can have, be, and do all the things that you want to do and have and be in this world, then that is where you have and are a definition of success because now you have tangible habits and things that you can operate from and practical steps that you can take and do on a daily basis or weekly basis preferably daily depending upon how fast you want it to come to you and magnetize towards you because you are feeling acting and being a success rather than searching striving and struggling to have success so if you love this episode please 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 take a screenshot of it, share it with your friends on Instagram, on your stories, and share it with them via the link in the 
podcast app, whatever podcast app you choose to be listening to this on. If you love this episode also and would be so kind to write a review, please do so on iTunes. I so appreciate and love reading every single one of them. And I thank you so, so much for joining me on my birthday to celebrate in all our being and all our successful being that we are. So let's step into it more, shall we? And remember, your reign is now. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If what you heard resonated with you, be sure to subscribe and share your breakthroughs and ahas with me by leaving a review on iTunes so I can keep the magic flowing your way. And if you aren't already following us on social media, come experience the extra inspiration and queenly convos on Instagram at crown yourself now or visit our website at crownyourself.com. I am so excited to connect with you in the next episode. And in the meantime, go out there and create a body, business, and life that rules.